Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Colonization. This is post-commentary on the missions that were conducted during the livestream on March 13th. Just a reminder, this is all in the Realism Overhaul set of mods for Kerbal Space Program, so we're operating on Earth in the real solar system. For most of the session, I was focused on getting stuff into orbit around Mars, or at least trying to, but first I had to deal with Mr. Lonely over here, the space telescope designed by Varlord Root and of course launched by myself. And of course this was the space telescope who was sentient, I say who because it uh, speaks when the program is activated. But anyway, that was in a previous episode and all I had to do here was get it into a circular orbit around the sun at 120 million kilometers. And so that's what I'm doing here with that stage. And now we separate off the transfer stage and then it's all ready to go. A few more tweaks, unlocking its fuel. It's got actually quite a bit of Delta V left over. And since it's sentient, I presume that means that it could be a potential menace to us. I don't know. 3,000 meters per second. So now we move on to our Mars missions. And this was the Long Range Mars Communication Relay by Bluegill Bronco. So I launched a payload for him. And now I have to get into orbit around Mars. And that's going to be a bit of a trick, though it's not too much of a problem with this probe. For the sake of future probes, I decided that I would test out whether I could do some aerobraking at Mars at various altitudes. And I use this as the test subject. So here we have the Estes vacuum engine burning MMH and N204. I get it to 51.4 kilometers there at the periapsis. And that issue is whether something can survive without a heat shield going into Mars's thin atmosphere at these speeds. I wasn't sure about that, so I wanted to check that out. Can something without heat shield uh, aerobrake just a little bit at Mars? I mean, not all the way, maybe not all the way into orbit, just burn some of its velocity, get some help? That's the question. So here we go. And I guaranteed that I was going to revert, so I did quick save ahead of time. So with the loss of this dish, I was not surprised or concerned, because this was a matter of testing and trying to find the right altitudes, if there was one, that we could get into the atmosphere of Mars, get some help with slowing down, and uh, perhaps... It wasn't really that important for this mission. This particular mission has enough Delta V to get into orbit. It's more important for the next two, both of which experienced liquid oxygen boil off on the way uh, to extreme degrees. So way more boil off than uh, any number I have ever seen would suggest is likely. So, And they do have cryogenic tanks, so I have no idea why they had so much boil off. It seems like uh, a bug in an earlier version of real fuels that has already been fixed, but uh, wasn't fixed in time for me. Uh, they had the boil off before I upgraded. Anyway, as you can see, the the upper dish and now the tank soon will explode at 55 kilometers, so I go to 62 kilometers. And of course, you see they do tend to explode at around 66 kilometers, but I'm also seeing with the shallower approach, we're not actually spending as much time in the atmosphere, so I'm hoping that helps. It doesn't really, it turns out. And in fact, I think that the main dish exploded even higher than before. I tried to slow down there, but it wasn't much help. Testing 64 kilometers. Never say I'm not persistent, but this time I decided to run the engine ahead of time to slow down. So we're at 64 kilometers in the atmosphere, and we're slowing down at the same time. And I'm hoping that preserves the main dish this time. We will see. It's a long way down. Now hitting 64 kilometers, it's definitely overheating to extreme degrees. But we are we are nearing the bottom of this. Almost at the end of the fuel in this stage as well, which is troublesome. You can see it takes a lot of delta V. That's something else I didn't anticipate. I didn't think it took quite this much delta V to get into orbit around Mars. I thought it would take a few hundred meters per second less. 
as a result, even this mission will not get into the orbit it was supposed to. It'll be in a very highly eccentric orbit. Okay, we are out of that stage. Now on to the probe's own stage. We're at 63.3 and it looks like the main dish has already cooled off actually. Thanks to all of the power from the engine. Okay, the little ant engines, well not ant engines in this case, one kilonewton thrusters doing their work very very slowly but uh, it will be sufficient to get us into orbit around Mars. There we go, we now have a positive apoapsis. The question is actually how do we get a little bit lower? You can see a very very high orbit there and we only have 178 meters per second left. We could have done a few more passes in the atmosphere. We were slow enough that the atmosphere could have brought us down. But I decided that this satellite, the fact that it will be relaying communications was too important. And I didn't want to take any risks. So I just let it stay high. It also means that I'll cover a certain amount of ground for an extended period of time. Whereas if we allow it to bring this orbit down, it's not going to be covering any particular patch for any length of time. Sort of in a Molnia orbit, if you will. Okay, now this is the Monopropaganda BMW. This was by Thy Lord Root, uh, who also did the space telescope that we saw earlier. And this is going into a polar orbit. And you can see I've got the periapsis at 65 kilometers. With the same idea that I'm going to be running the engines to slow down and hopefully that will help. And so here we go. Uh, it's an interesting stage we've got there. Now I've got very little fuel in this stage this time. And that's because it was paired with a methane oxygen stage. You can still see the leftover methane, which uh, we don't have any more oxygen for. That's the big problem and that's the reason why this is going to have trouble. But even at 65 kilometers, that tank is, well, it explodes. So, did not work so well this time. Um, this worked worse than the other mission. So much for testing. But I still tried to get it into orbit, but turns out that that was not working out for us. So, and actually here more, more explodey kind of thing. Yep, I think it's safe to say that this push did not work. And so I basically came to the conclusion that we will need heat shields to slow down at Mars uh, unless we really have the Delta V to do so. There is no safe altitude that will do any good for us as far as slowing down. Another problem was that this probe didn't have the Delta V in the more powerful stage, the one that we're dumping right there, and instead we have this single one kilonewton thruster, and so it couldn't slow down enough uh, on its 65km uh, pass before the antennae exploded. And that's why we couldn't trust it to go into the atmosphere. And it took us such a long time that we were way out of the atmosphere and still trying to burn off velocity. So a uh, big problem, mainly it was a problem with the transfer stage. We really needed more Delta V there. It shouldn't be the probe's duty to do this part, really. This was a misuse of the probe. And ultimately, despite our best efforts, it remained on escape. As you can see, the apoapsis, still a negative number, means it's going to head out into interplanetary space again. And so that failed, and I promised Thylord Root that I would relaunch it, so that was how that worked out. Here we have the Mars Pair, which was my own probe. And you can see we've got a resource scanner on top, and there was also a blue testing lander. So I wanted to see whether a balut would work at Mars and we had a lander with uh, surface scanning instruments and stuff like that. Now this is interesting because we have our communication dish 
on this Mars pair on the on the gourd like portion if you will and so if we tried to stage here we would lose communication that is a problem so here I am getting ready for entry and we're at uh, 64.8 kilometers I'm hoping that at least the green stage here will be able to slow us down enough but here I've lost communication because we are actually out of line of sight with Earth. I am prepared to take advantage of the fact that Smart ESS does not care about that at all, but I can't stage like that because staging is dependent on remote tech. So I basically allowed the gourd to ablate, as you can see it doing here. It just blows up because of overheating and I hope I can slow down enough so that the green portion, which contains the fuel for these Gemini lander engines, does not overheat. We've got one decoupler protecting us right now. And here the decoupler is overheating. Okay, and that's the end of the decoupler, so now it's just a tank facing the heat. Still going very fast, you can see more than 7,000 meters per second. I think this mission was coming in faster than the other two, and that's because we launched it at a different time. I think we launched it later, and launching it later means that uh, it came in faster. And it does not look like the green tank is going to survive. We have the Delta V at 2,000 meters per second, but we need communication to stage and we need the tanks to survive. That is not happening there. So, what to do? What to do indeed? Well, that is our approach in this case. Of course it has to be polar for the resource scanner. And I'm trying to figure out the communication. We currently have a line to the other mission, the Long Range Mars Communication Relay. But here, I lose communication and we do not have communication anymore. So Mars is blocking us. Anyway, I try and use the 2,200 or so meters per second in this stage to slow us down. However, while I thought this would be enough to slow down the 2,200 meters per second, it turns out that on this particular trajectory going faster, it really wasn't. And so we see here that it's close, but with the last 100 meters per second, and we're already going up, we're past periapsis. Maybe if we had a lower periapsis, it would have done better. But here we're running out, and that's the end of it. And I can't stage, right, because I don't have connection. Here I am connected, so I do stage. And I decide to use the lander's fuel to try and slow down further and get into orbit. And so I unlock the Erezine and N204. Unfortunately, the engine does not ignite. Why doesn't the engine ignite? I have no idea. But here we go, let's see. I throttle up. You can see the engine is activated. If we right click on the engine, we see propellant very stable. The feed pressure should be fine, it's just a service module tank for sure, otherwise it would say it wasn't. It would say feed pressure low, but it says no propellants. It doesn't say feed pressure low, it says no propellants. So that was a curious bug. And so my only option was to stage off the lander and just discard it, and also the blute. There goes the blute and try and use the one kilonewton thruster on this stage to try and get into orbit. But by now we were so high that it was very inefficient. If we had done that burn at periapsis it might have worked but from here it's still going by the way um, I think. Yeah the throttle's up so I assume the thruster is still going and it's just the fact that we were on physical time warp that's not working but now we're out of fuel. Yeah, now we're out of fuel. So we did not get into orbit with this one. I try again. This time I have to figure out a way to do 
as much of the burn as possible close to Mars, and I decided that the best option would be to try and write a KOS script to tell KOS to do the staging when I'm out of communication. Uh, I quickly discovered that writing a KOS script while streaming is not something I can do. Uh, I do a very bad job of it, and here, here we are trying to sell the fuel down. Something that I have to figure out. I did eventually figure out how to get KOS to do. But here the script is running. It stages the pair portion, the, the gourd portion, we'll call it, and uh, running those engines. That's fine. It uh, looks alright for now, but I made a critical error. I put the word stage in the wrong place in the script. So eventually, as we go along, it decides to randomly stage again. Right there. And that was not something it was supposed to do. And obviously that's a failure. At this point, I decided that I should probably call it quits because everything was going wrong. I had one partial success and two failures. So I spent the rest of the stream actually working on stuff for the Exploring the Future series and working on the KOS scripts for that. At least those I had written the KOS, KOS scripts ahead of time and just needed to tweak them a little bit. But yeah, that's why I did for the rest of March 13th. And hopefully our other interplanetary missions go a lot better than the initial foray to Mars. Very realistic though, I, I must admit. Uh, early Mars missions in real life also had trouble. Uh, not quite the same trouble, different trouble. But anyway, on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.